What's happening, folks? Welcome back to The Highway with Kyle Shutt. Are you as sick of me not interviewing the dead milkman as I am? Well, we're going to take care of that today. We got Joe Jack Talcum on the program, one of my favorite guitar players of all time. And uh, I could hardly contain my excitement. As always, if you like what you've been hearing on the program, you can go ahead and hit that thumbs up, do that little follow, and uh, if you want to go to our YouTube page and see the video element of the show, uh, my boy Austin Buchanan puts a lot of work into that, and uh, so if you could go subscribe to that, it would help us out more than you know. And if you want to go one step further, you can find us at patreon.com slash the highway. For a few scant bucks a month, you can help keep this show going. If you want to shell out a little bit more, We'll send a merch package your way. You can even sign up for some online guitar lessons from me so you can shred like the gods. And everybody gets a shout out. So thank you all so much for listening. On this week's gear shout out, I want to want to rep some Railhammer pickups. Uh, they're owned and operated by the, the sweet people over at Reverend Guitars, but they are two separate companies. Uh, they are some sweet ass pickups. Enough said, you can get signature models from yours truly, uh, from Bob Balch, Billy Corgan, Reeves Gabrels. The, the list goes on and on. Now, I try to be modest and I try to be humble, but I got to interview my favorite guitar player and you didn't. So let's do things my way. The Highway. Joe, what's going on? Hey, Kyle, how are you? I'm doing just fine, man. Thanks so much for joining us, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Sorry about yesterday. Oh no, hey, it happens. <laughs> I completely understand. If I don't write everything down, it just it all gets lost. So, <laughs> no, no <laughs> worries. It's a it's a beautiful day here in Austin, Texas. Uh, are you are you still in Philadelphia? No, now I live in the burbs. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, uh, like I said, I've been a fan for a real long time. I, I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, I just kind of if you hadn't you know, checked out the show yet. We just kind of talk about what got people, you know, into art and uh, wanting to pursue a life like that. And um, uh, I've always really looked up to your guitar playing. Um, Just it's um, to play with a real clean or a cleaner style like that. It's, it's a really brave way of uh, playing the guitar. And uh, I was just curious, like within, you know, within the punk scene and things like that, I was just curious, like what some of your guitar heroes were like, what kind of what made you uh, pursue like a a cleaner style like that at, at a time when everything was like so abrasive. Steve Boone from the Minutemen was one of my guitar heroes. Are you familiar with the Minutemen? Oh yeah. Other other guitar heroes of mine <laughs> were uh, John Lennon, George Harrison, Paul McCartney, <laughs> the Beatles. No, that makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the punk scene, but and also Johnny Johnny Ramone. <laughs> makes a lot of sense. And I did try. I did try playing with distortion early on, but I just didn't get. I didn't get the hang of uh, how to control it very well. So <laughs> it's it's. I, I I'm terrified when I have to play with a clean tone. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Props to you, but um, yeah, I, I'm mostly known for playing, which is like a wall of distortion, which is uh, it's, it's a fun way to to hide behind your guitar. But oh yeah, uh, also Buck, Buck style. Guitar, <laughs> 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 I like that stuff. But uh, yeah, um, it's and and also just uh, being a fan for so long and listening to all your records, like it was um, looking back on it all. Um, the like your the first wave of the Dead Milkman was such a short period of time, really, like in, in the scheme of things. Um, and I was just uh, I was kind of curious, like how you know how y'all toured back then. Like, was it just in a van? Because y'all y'all went through you know like being on like punk indie labels and it's funny because it's it, it seems like a long time to me. Uh, but it was, it was a lot of touring, and I have a feeling that tour, touring take makes your time go longer in your brain mm-hmm. or shorter. And sometimes I'll I'll have like lost years, and it just felt like a week. But sometimes at the same time, it just it's been more than half my life. It feels like forever. It's kind of like a paradox because tours go by fast once they're over. They seem like wow, that was fast. But while you're while you're in them, they they're like so eventful that mm-hmm. you're processing so much stuff. At least that's the way it was for me. The initial Dead Milkman uh, with Dave Blood, you, um, yeah, yeah. Dave Blood is there before we broke up. Um, for me, that was an intense period of life. Mm-hmm. 
But how did y'all tour back in those days? Was it just a van for like the whole time, or did y'all ever like uh, during the major label years like try a, yeah, try a bus and stuff? Yeah, we started out touring in vans. Uh, we went through two vans of our own, and then um, we graduated a tour, to tour buses, running tour buses for a couple tours. Um, and then there, there's that's a really expensive way to tour. Yeah, yeah for <laughs> you real. Have money left over some uh, sometimes. So we we ended up the last couple tours we did were done in a town rented town car, Lincoln Town Car. <laughs> rider truck rented rider truck so people in the truck people in the car i mean and then merch and gear in the truck and we always had a drive our merch guy drove the truck or or roadie did depending and somebody usually dean the, the drummer would sit shot ride shotgun in the truck and the rest of us would ride in the town car and our road manager would drive the town car nice that's a smart <laughs> that, way to that do was it actually yeah. it's comfortable of all, of all this of all the the ways we did it yeah could, could you did you ever have trouble sleeping on the tour bus i had trouble sleeping on a tour bus and that was another thing i didn't like so much about them uh, they're certainly comfortable but the way the way those tours usually went is the driver would drive overnight <laughs> like right after the show was uh -huh. over you might hour or so to get in the bus and then you know there'd be a call time for it to leave and then leave during the drive time and then when you wake up you're in the city parked at the hotel uh -huh. <laughs> i didn't like it as much because there's that transition from i would i wouldn't get too much sleep on the bus and have to sleep until whenever in the hotel it just seemed like whatever yeah, it it would be nice if you could like if you can afford both hotels and buses cuz a lot of times if we were on a bus we would just be on the bus and I would turn into a vampire. I mean, I'd have to sleep until like 4 p.m. just cuz I couldn't sleep when the bus was Well, moving. yeah. <laughs> Almost all drive the drivers we hired that uh, part of the contract was they had to have hotel rooms, yeah. of course. The first the first bus tour we ever did, we only got a hotel room for the driver and he would let us know when he was done with the room. <laughs> yeah, we go in there and use up all the showers. I was gonna say like yeah, eight people like trying to shower in, in an hour. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. In a very short amount of time, and there will be always arguments. You took too long. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a shower. <laughs> I grew up in a, a really small town in West Texas called Midland, and um, I first oh. uh, got your. Um, I think I, I got Big Lizard first, but then uh, whenever Eat Your Paisley, uh, I found that at a CD store, and um, uh, that song Six Days. Uh, y'all sing about just you know being on tour. I was at this point I was you know 16 just dreaming of going on tour and um hearing mm -hmm. about like uh, how many cities y'all hated but then it, when the last verse of the song is when you get to Austin and how rad it was um yeah. that, that really made me want to uh, to move here so that was a a, a part of oh, wow. uh, why I chose Austin back in <laughs> I moved here in 2000 but yeah I, I just wanted to ask like, what uh I, I am now yeah um I was going to ask like just what Austin was like back in those days and, and what made y'all fall in love with it It was just this just the coolest place, probably the coolest place of of all the places we played at on our first tour. And that's the song was written during our first tour mm -hmm. or after our first tour. Um, it was kind of weird. And uh, how do I put this? It was not exactly what we expected from Texas, but it still felt like Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, it was to me, very psychedelic. There are people, I guess, Acid was very popular at the time in 1985. Um, still is. <laughs> still is. I guess it, it, things never change. <laughs> and it had a rugged feel to it. It wasn't, it got a lot fancier later. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the same town at all as it was in the 80s when we were there. It was very inexpensive, too. You can get a breakfast a really big breakfast for under two bucks mm -hmm. and it really takes great <laughs> mexican burritos and stuff tex-mex food was really good mm -hmm. but that's true of everywhere in texas that is true uh yeah whenever i first moved here i got a job at a, a photocopy center and that was sort of my my end with the scene all the punk bands would come and i would copy their flyers for free and they, they would <laughs> yeah. let, let, let me into their shows but um i was wearing a, i actually had a, a soul rotation shirt on um, it was like the one with like the puffy ink back when those were popular. If you remember those, uh, 
but um, yeah. uh, a guy walked in and he saw my shirt. He was like, oh man, the Dead Milkman, great band. And uh, he, he happened to work at a club called Emo's and uh, mm-hmm. he had a bunch of flyers and I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, don't worry about the flyers if you just get me into some shows sometime. And uh, we struck up a friendship. His name was uh, Graham Williams. And uh, that's how I got to, to yeah. meet Graham. And he t- he was <laughs> telling me the story about how when he was a little kid <laughs> that y'all actually <laughs> brought a, a whole classroom of kids into the studio when you were doing, uh, well, uh, what was yeah. it, um, Metaphysical Graffiti? Yeah. Uh, to yes. sing on Beige Sunshine. And uh, yeah, he was one of those kids that actually sang on that song. And he... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Uh, yeah, what, what was that like being in the studio and, and uh, having a whole classroom of kids? It was fun. We, and we took him out for pizza afterwards. That's cool. <laughs> that was, yeah, we wanted something different. Like, I loved working with Brian, Brian Beatty, because he was good at collaborating with us with ideas and he never, no idea was ever too stupid for him to try Mm -hmm. and he's brian the the producer of the album is the person that got the kids together it's like one of the kids was the engineer's daughter and yeah i didn't i didn't know graham williams was one of the kids until he had us play fun 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 fest and he told us he was one of the kids that sang on that song (laughs) or actually Brian, brian called us up and said you should play this fun 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 fest that the guy you know the guy who's uh organizing it is one of the Beige Sunshine singers. <laughs> I didn't realize Beige Sunshine was such a, a tongue twister until I just tried to say it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's named after a brand of acid. No, hey, hey, that's I great. Think, I think we made up maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always, um, so people ask me to describe like what y'all's music is like sometimes. And so I was, I was like, it's like, um, like Cat Stevens on acid. But then I realized that Cat Stevens probably was on acid. So then oh, I yeah. really know how to, to, to describe it. People who don't have the musical ability that Cat Stevens had on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I was curious because, um, you know, y'all, well, I, I did before we move on to kind of later phase uh, or the second wave of, of Milkman. I did want to ask like kind of what it was like it, it, through the 90s, like kind of making records on indie labels and then going into that major label world for Soul Rotation and and uh, not Richard, but Dick, because that was a lot different than the, you know, my experience or any experience that a band can have these days. Yeah. Well, we got a Enigma fever and restless and Enigma were labels that paid a lot of attention to us. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe sometimes more attention than we wanted. And then we got to Hollywood records after Enigma folded. Um, and <laughs> nobody paid attention to us at all. And it was kind of, we felt felt that uh, they no nobody at that label really cared what what we did and it was bizarre. We took their money and we made we made a record. So they didn't like bug you about the, being in the studio or anything like that. Like uh... they barely bugged us about being in the studio. It was n- totally the opposite of what we expected would happen. Wow, that's wild. Yeah, I, I... <laughs> they left us alone, and I don't know. Maybe they didn't know what to think of us, but they also kind of left the record alone too. Was that that was? I guess that was kind of in the days when like the label still didn't know like what was cool or not. You know what I mean? They're like, I don't know. Maybe this will work. Just let them do what they yeah, want. I don't, I don't know what, why they, why, why they were interested in us in the first place, but we got barely any interest from any other labels. So we figured, why not? Let's go with it. Yeah, not bad. It, 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 was that experience kind of what led to the initial kind of hiatus? I, I, I guess you could call. I guess so. It was part of it. The initial hiatus came about, I think because uh, Dean and Rodney in particular were getting tired of doing it and they wanted to do other things. Yeah. So that happens. It's understandable. Uh, I was, I was, I was upset when, uh, when I heard about when I, when we had the meeting where we decided we weren't going to do it anymore, mm -hmm. but I got over it. I mean, well, you, I mean, you hit the ground running though with your that this the Butterfly Joe record, uh, which I love, uh, by the way. Um, my my yeah. actually, me and my daughter listen to that quite often. Uh, she loves that record. Yeah, it, it was funny just seeing uh, seeing Dean in that band too, because there was that was back in the super early days of the internet, where like I I think I saw maybe one video of y'all playing it. Did you ever tour the the solo album or anything like that? We didn't really tour. We we went we played a few regional shows. Mm-hmm. We went to. Toronto for some kind of festival um, right after it got released but we didn't tour and that and Dean wasn't gonna tour anyway mm-hmm. that's 
one of the reasons he stopped in Oakland. He didn't win a tour. He wanted to settle down, get get a steady job, and a, a raise a family, which he did. So for for me to tour on that album, I would have needed to create a touring band, and I yeah. didn't do that. It's a lot of work putting a new band together, you know. You know? I almost did, and I'm not. Sh- I guess my life would have turned out completely different, but I decided also to take a take a steady job that was offered to me at the time and, you know, <laughs> get paid a dec- uh, more decent amount of money than I'd been making. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> and, uh, during, uh, I guess during that time, this would have been, I guess, like the early 2000s when the internet was just sort of starting to simmer. Um, yeah, yes. yeah. The the Dead Milkman website was actually pretty um, uh, engaging. I mean, like, I, I can't remember who exactly updated it often. Demon. I mean, that was his, that's what he went. He went back to school for. Well, he was an art student. He was an artist. He had a degree in graphic design. So he went back to school to learn web design. And that's what he was doing. So he was the guy behind that. Yeah, it was just really fun, uh, just like uh, answering just fan questions on the email, just seeing all the the answers. Uh, one of the ones that stuck out to me was um, somebody asked uh, what y'all had on your tour rider, uh, which uh, if yeah. anybody's listening, that's that's the list of you know uh, snacks and and boozes and things that we get uh, backstage when we arrive. And yes. um, they're reading the, it was a very normal, uh, modest rider, but one item on there was the fresh cut flowers every day. That's uh, genius, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna ask who's, who's fresh cut flowers. Well, it's like because if you're playing fucking CBGB and shit, yeah, you might want some just just some flowers backstage. You know, something just that some flowers good. in our dressing room. And if he if he liked the if he liked the the bouquet, he would bring it up on stage and put it in front of his drums. For us. <laughs> <laughs> and Rodney would want a newspaper. He would use that as a prop sometimes, but he would also use it to 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 come up with a topical humor. Uh huh. That, that, that's uh, yeah I, you know i didn't think about it that way yeah that yeah it's pretty good it's a it acts as both a stage prop and something else <laughs> um and I, I asked for the six pack of uh dark beer nice. hoping it would be guinness <laughs> so that's fucking hilarious uh just because seeing rodney with the newspaper in the punk rock girl video yeah, uh, that, that makes total sense now. Um, whenever uh, that was kind of, that's actually how I first heard about y'all was um, you kind of snuck in MTV through a uh, Beavis and Butthead, and I was watching that one time and like it was because oh, yeah. they hated like every song you know that that would come on, but like when Dead Note would come on, they'd be like yes, <laughs> fuck yes. Yeah. So that was a uh, yeah uh, for whatever reason um, they, they could beat me up even. <laughs> but was, this is kind of back in those days when I didn't really understand that Beavis and Butthead were supposed to be idiots. Yeah, you know what I mean. I was just like, no, these are like the yeah. cool kids, right? You know, I was, <laughs> I wasn't the smartest kid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, was, was I mean, was that? I guess they played a few of your videos on MTV or yeah, what, they play that and smoking banana peels. Yeah, that's, those are great videos. And actually, um, I I bought the uh, the DVD that came out like they had all your um. The, the video collection that came uh, out maybe it was like 2003 2004 that was a great yeah. release i miss music videos they're uh, they're such a waste of money these days because um they're just they, they're, they're a waste of money they're a waste of money and and uh it's a shame because they really don't promote albums like they used to but i i, I love music videos and you I mean love they're, they're a waste of money to produce yeah to make yeah i mean oh, okay. just, I, I guess it's not a waste if you're in it oh, for the okay. art but it's just as far as like what you're going to spend on album promotion yeah un- unfortunately videos yeah you can't really depend on him anymore i guess is my point we got a couple of videos made for our last album i don't I, I don't know what a waste how much money we wasted but waste was a harsh term sorry i just got paid i just got paid to make a music video for a band for the first time ever hell yeah so now i'm on the other side i'll take the money <laughs> <laughs> were you uh doing the filming of it and and, and the video production or were, were you doing like the art for it? art your art is awesome. It's on uh, it's on Thank Joe's you. Instagram page. It's, well, it's I, I did the whole video, but it was all art. It was basically art, shots of art, and I animated some of them. That's great. It's I love how just like um just kind of loopy and, and playful it is. I just it's uh, it's it's a real joy to see musicians um kind of delve into other mediums and stuff like that. It, it's really enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I was gonna. You, you mentioned uh, Fun 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 Fest earlier, which uh, rest in peace was the best festival Austin ever had. Um, it was you could oh, see, yeah. you know, everybody from you know like Public Image Limited to you know Gorguts, and it was just, it was a really fantastic fest. But um, I, I wanted to ask, and this was still kind of in the early days of smartphones. 
uh, when y'all first got back together. But was there uh-huh. like a, a shock whenever you went from playing shows, you know, in the eighties and nineties to now you're back together and everybody has a phone in your face? <laughs> a shock? Yeah. I don't. I don't think of it as a shock. It was. I remember being at Fun 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 Fest and I didn't have a smartphone yet. I wouldn't get one till 2016. Mm-hmm. This was 2008, and just being amused at a whole, like seeing a whole line of young people sitting down and with their heads down and every, every single one of them was on looking at a phone screen. <laughs> That's typical these days. But back then I just thought, and I, I hadn't gone to, I hadn't gone to a lot of concerts, big concerts like that, where that many young people were together. Mm-hmm. But that is one memory I have of fun, fun, fun fest. And I agree. It was a great time. I am glad we decided to go and we probably wouldn't have gotten back together if it weren't for that, if it weren't for Graham. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't want to uh, bring up Dave too much, but was it was that part of it where you thought that maybe you didn't want to go back there because he wasn't around anymore? Yeah. Yeah. That was part of it. And we said no about three times to that before before we uh, got, got convinced to say yes. Well, I'm glad you did. And yeah. It's funny, like, you're talking about everybody staring at their phones now. Like, I, it, it, I, I guess it did happen a lot more than it used to, but I, I remember going to shows back in the day and people would, you know, like <laughs> going to see like some, you know, uh, emo or indie band and, uh, you know, kids are sitting on the ground, like just reading books. <laughs> you know, I've seen that too. Never That's seen, true. I haven't seen that. In a they're, not, they're not talking to each other. They're just reading yeah, books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember what band. I think I went to go see mates of state or something like that. Yeah. And there was just all these kids reading like poetry books <laughs> sitting outside emo. Wow. Uh, yeah. That was, that was good <laughs> That's the demographic for the emo, uh, yeah, emo exactly. band. Yes. Um, I, I didn't really see that at dead open shows to be honest. I yeah. never noticed that. <laughs> for sure. I've taken books to my own shows, but that's only to, cause there's a lot of downtime mm-hmm. and you're waiting for people to show up. Back in the, uh, uh, early, cause y'all don't really like tour per se anymore. Or, I mean, you just kind of do fly ins <laughs> and festivals and stuff. Um, but, uh, back in the, yeah, that's what the do. yeah. Did, did y'all have any like, um, you know, uh, brother or sister bands, you know, that you, that you always like uh, tour together a lot or anything, or was it just kind of you tour with whatever offers you got? We had, there's, we did a huge tour with Mojo Nixon and that was a lot of fun. The, the artist that we name checked in punk rock girl. Mm-hmm. And we did another really long tour with Possum Dixon, an LA band that are now broken up. But that was also a lot of fun. I, was, I, I love hearing those days uh, we're like riding around in vans with uh, no smartphones, no GPS, no nothing, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> just an Atlas. Yeah. That was way before smartphones and you just get into all kinds of annex and you get to know the other band members pretty well. We also did a week long tour with King Missile. Do you know them? I have never heard mm-hmm. of them. No, never heard of King Missile. Mm-hmm. You should check them out if you get a chance. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to do that. Right right when we hang a out. New York based band with a lot of humor. Mm-hmm in their lyrics and they do a lot of talking spoken word music songs sort of like the song Stuart from the mm-hmm. there's a whole scene uh, of that these days and I, I, I did want to harp on it uh, a little bit because I um, uh, I went to a show last night actually um, uh, a band called Pears uh, from New Orleans great punk band um, but there's a a whole scene of uh, kind of like spoken word bands now like a Proto Martyr or Dry Cleaning mm-hmm. and things and um, especially being at the show last night um, I, I have a big, big lizard in my backyard patch on my jacket, and uh, I got from like you know young punks so many uh compliments uh about that. So uh, I just I, th- I thought it was great that y'all are still like this many years on influencing like so many young people to like go start bands and stuff like that. I mean, it's just uh, it's a it's a hard thing to do these days. Um, so it was worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, what um. What are y'all up to now? I mean, you got any, got any, I know like the, the world is still a bit uh, topsy turvy, but uh, do you have anything on the books? Ed Milkman had recorded one half of an album. We think it's one half. Uh, and that's we're we put it on hold for a little while. I think we have more than enough songs to record the second half, but we right now are rehearsing for a trio of shows that we're going to play in around this area in Mark in April and May, maybe, a, maybe four shows. I don't know. Three or four shows. Three of them are set up right now. 
Yeah, uh, the, the the new records are so, are so different. I, I love how y'all just kind of just keep the trajectory. Oh, yeah. We did King, the know. King in Yellow was the one we did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then we did Pretty Music for Pretty People, and that, that those are the two ones. We did a single. Uh, we recorded a single right before the pandemic hit, and it came out in 2020 called uh, We Don't Need This Fascist Groove Thing, which is a cover of a Heaven 17 song. So that's out there in the in the market right now. Mm-hmm. A seven inch or MP3 down there. Are you still are you working on any solo stuff or any with anything with the low budgets still? Oh, we also did an EP. I'm sorry, the Dead Milkman did an EP in 2017 called "Welcome to the End of the World." It's a six song, twelve inch EP. We're planning to put out a whole full length LP. That's what I said. Mm. We only have half of it recorded. Solo stuff I am working on. I recorded the split album with Moody Spencer. And that should come out sometime this year. Everything takes a long time to get pressed, but the record company that's putting out that album is really a cassette company, but this is going to be the first vinyl release and they're called This and That Tapes. It's so funny to me how cassettes are just back, you know, it, it, <laughs> I mean, they are cool and they do sound great, but they're also like way faster and easier and cheaper to produce than vinyl because it takes oh, yeah. forever to get records pressed these days. It's nuts. It's, it's just insane how long it takes now. Because I think we're uh, the, we're doing like, something secret that I can't talk about, but uh, to even get it done by the time we need, we have to. It's going to take like a year to like for the, yeah, the exactly. plant to press it. It's it's absolutely insane. Never seen anything like it, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, uh, thank thanks so much, Joe, for coming on and talking with us. Uh, I, like I said, yeah, you have been one of my favorite guitar players for a long, long time, and uh, it just uh, it. It means a lot uh, that you came on, so thank you. Um, and I also ask uh, all our musical guests if they'd uh, like to play a song uh, off of anything they got coming up or, or any uh, anything you've been promoting. Uh, you can play the Dead Milkman's um, We Don't Need This Fascist Group thing if you want. Hell yeah. I'm going to put that on right now. And uh, yeah, thanks again, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. If I move to the group, to the group, if I move to the group, to the group, if I move to the group, to the group, if I move to the group, to the group, if I move to the group, to the group, if I move to the group, to the group. You heard it on the news About this fascist group thing Evil men with racist views Spreading all across the land Don't just sit there on your ass Unlock that mighty chain dance Brothers, sisters, shoot your best We don't need this fascist group thing Brothers, sisters We don't need no fascist group thing Brothers, sisters, we don't need no fascist grouping. History will repeat itself. Crisis point when near the hour. Count of us will do no good. Hot US, I feel your power. Hitler proved that funky stuff. It's not for you and me, girl. No, 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 no. no. no happy land. They've had the fascist group. Brothers, sisters, we don't need no fascist group thing. Brothers, sisters, we don't need no fascist group thing. Democrats are out of style. Across that great wide ocean Reagan's president-elect A fascist got in motion Generals tell him what to do So stop your good time dancing They train their guns on me new A fascist thing advancing Brothers, sisters, lend a hand Increase our population Let's get out on the dance floor. Come out your house and dance, dance. Let's shake that fascist group thing. Brothers, sisters, we don't need no fascist group thing. Brothers, sisters, we don't need no fascist group thing.
thanks for tuning in to The Highway with Kyle Shutt. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe if you want to keep up with the latest episodes. And don't forget to check out The Highway with Kyle Shutt playlist on Spotify to keep up with all the rad tunes that we play on the program. And if you need some new gear in your life, don't forget to check out Reverend Guitars, Railhammer Pickups, Idiot Box Effects, and Ray Ray Decker Cables. Stay high, everybody. We'll see you next week.